I'm Heather Goodall. I'm Professor Emerita in History at the University of Technology, Sydney, where I teach and research. I'm Tom Brooking, Emeritus Professor, who knows a lot less about Latin than uh, Heather does. And I've taught at the University of Otago for 41 years before I retired in 2018, the end of the year. It's been our great pleasure to be judges for the Ernest Scott Prize. Um, the prize is for the most distinguished contribution to the history of Australia or New Zealand or the history of colonisation and I might add the history of colonialism that has been published in the last year. Judging a competition such as this has been a real privilege, but it's also been uh, an intense test of endurance given we had to read 67 books on a diverse range of subjects, the majority of which were a very high standard. But I think the key thing we were looking for, above all else, was books that brought uh, something fresh, something new, something exciting uh, to the historiography of Australia, New Zealand, and the British Commonwealth. So overall, the judging process was a very rewarding experience for both of us. Yeah, it has been, absolutely. After all those hard decisions, we are delighted to announce that there are two winners of this prize this year. The first winner is Grace Carskins for People of the River. And the second winner is Harini Carr for his book, Te Hahi Minahare, and it is the Māori Anglican Church. I'd like to talk about Grace's book and to say what a, a wonderful privilege it was to read it. It gives us a start at a deep time perspective and we are able to see Grace's extraordinarily um, skillful presentation of the archaeology of deep time of these rivers, the Hawkesbury and Apean, as we know them in Australia, or Dirubbin, as Grace draws the indigenous name out and explains this complex twist of, of water flow that we see to the west of what's now the metropolis of Sydney. This is an important river and Grace gives us lots of hydrology and geology and she tells us about climate change, but it's the people of these rivers which really come into view and for whom we feel empathy, we engage with the ways that they struggled and with their achievements as well as their failures. Grace is able to allow us to recognise the experiences of Indigenous peoples in these areas. This is an extraordinary achievement. Other writers have been reluctant to speak on behalf of Aboriginal people. Grace does not resile from that challenge and she, despite having to speculate at times, she always works from the assumption that Indigenous peoples were exercising agency. They were taking active and strategic decisions to try and make sense of these very rapidly changing circumstances in their own country. But Grace also brings to life the people who were the early settlers. And these are the convicts and the emancipists. And it is these people who have been so disparaged in later histories. And yet the people who struggled to make livelihoods and who engaged actively with Aboriginal people their relationships were sometimes tense, sometimes conflictual, but sometimes deeply warm and emotional. And it's that complex interaction that Grace really brings to life, I think. It's my pleasure to talk about another equally wonderful book, which is Hurani Carr's Te Hahi Mihinari, The Māori Anglican Church. Hurani Carr's written a compelling book, demonstrating, maybe above all else, the dynamic nature of Indigenous cultures and the agency of colonised peoples. It's a very elegantly written account as well that reveals how Māori have become committed to an ecumenical approach and remade Anglicanism into a faith consistent with the central values of Māori society. Carr has a real insider perspective uh, and this is heightened by the Fano family connections Fano, of course, meaning family in, in the Māori language, given his Ngāti Pūrau, Ngāti Kahungunu, and Rongo Whakata 
Whakapapa or genealogy, big tribes of the East Coast. His father Honi was a dean in the Anglican Church and Hirani is an Anglican minister himself who teaches in both history and theology at the University of Auckland. He's managed to consistently balance that insider perspective by following a meticulous analytical approach to archival and oral evidence. So this is a very good book in the Western tradition as well as in the Maori way. Carr's crafting of this complex story reveals much has been achieved through persistence or kia manawanui, as well as determination and kia kaha or strength, qualities for which Maori are well known. And finally, despite its specificity to both New Zealand and Anglicanism, this is a valuable book for all of us in Australasia and beyond, indeed, around the globe. No longer can it be assumed that colonial missionaries determined the terms of conversion or the content of the new forms which emerged. In this outstanding book, Carr demands that the agency of colonised people is recognised as central to the emergence of new ways to understand faith and culture. In some, a truly compelling read. I would just add to that, that as an Australian reader, and I learnt so much about New Zealand in this process, but as an Australian reader, I was challenged by the amount of te reo Māori in Hirini Kā's book. Māori language is present and is a very important part of this story, but we have the luminous translations of Hirini Kā himself, and it allows us as we grapple with this challenge of reading this book and the power of the book comes through, it allows us to think more actively, I think, about that agency of colonised peoples. And it gives us an insight into how Māori was seeing these tense discussions as they pushed and pushed to try to remake Anglicanism into the forms that made sense for them. This, I think, offers a challenge and an opportunity for Australians to pick up that generous invitation we have been given by Indigenous Australians, offering their languages. There are so many wonderful Indigenous language teachers, so many fabulous programs developed by Indigenous peoples in their languages, on their country, that we have the opportunity as white Australians like myself to learn much more, to learn insights, into how people see the world and to learn how to listen far more effectively to Indigenous people's voices. So on that note, I'd like to thank both Hirini Carr and Grace Carskins for these powerful books, which are emotionally compelling as well as intellectually devastatingly insightful. They both give us a new way to see the past and a new way to see our futures.